Uh, Fred, yeah, thanks for the response. Um, I, uh, I love that stuff too. I like, uh, the stepping out in front of your house in the morning and sort of going, okay, um, <clears throat> how should I live this life? I, it's a question that obsesses me, and um, my family members sort of have often told me, look, you think way too much, um, and <laughs> to which I've never actually replied to their faces. Um, I think you think too little, you know? <laughs> so what are you, what are you going to do with that? Uh, when me thinking about everything, me sort of being in a constant state of amazement in, uh, in my own existence, um, <clears throat> uh, is exactly what it is that makes life worth living for me. Uh, and now, I'm not saying that I'm constantly, I, I shouldn't say that, constantly in a state of, wow, isn't life a neat old playground? Uh, because, you know, I've seen enough of the bad side, too, and, uh, you know, you, you understand that it's there. Um, but how do you relate to that? How do you relate to the fact that you're a human being? My favorite example of that is uh, from the sitcom, the American sitcom Seinfeld, where you have a series of neurotics, some of them Catholic, some of them Jewish, and they sort of play on, in, in the script of the, the shows, they play on the neuroses of all the characters. Um, Jerry Seinfeld and his uh, sometime girlfriend or his ex-girlfriend Elaine and George Costanza are crazy, um, and they're always seeming to try to catch up to life. Uh, they're always uh, sort of blown away by everything, and they don't understand life, um, and they're often amazed by the fact that everyone else just seems to breeze through life, they, everyone else seems to know what to do. Um, <clears throat> people just sort of take it for granted that, you know, there's a proper way to live, and people just live it, and they're standing there in amazement, wondering how these people manage to pull this off, to be just you know, totally well adjusted in this world. Now, of course, nobody's that well adjusted. It's just that's in the caricatures that are their characters in this. That's how they see it. That's their view of the world. Everything screws up for me. Nothing is ever easy for me, and it's uh, it's always easy for everybody else, which is a powerful element in you know traditional Jewish humor. But an interesting character that's injected into there is Kramer. He, too, doesn't understand the world. He, he doesn't get it. It doesn't make any sense to him at all. But he sees the world through the eyes of a child. He sees the world as a never-ending source of amazement. Um, rather than bewilderment and discouragement and um, uh, guilt, I guess, that you know Jerry and George and Elaine feel, he sort of sees it as, wow, there's just, there's just no end to the surprises that this world can, you know, can throw at me. And they're all cool. They're all really neat. There's one episode that I know, I, and by the way, I'd hardly ever watch this show. But, you know, I, it's an interesting dynamic, that show. It's one of the better shows, one of the better sitcoms, uh, where he's just sitting on the on the living room table, uh, li li living room couch, uh, drinking, I think, a bottle of uh, Jerry's whiskey. Now, he's drinking whiskey, and he's getting intoxicated. Now, the way that he carried on you sort of thought that he was the first person to have ever gotten drunk in history. He's totally fascinated with this ridiculously mundane, even sordid experience. He's just sitting there play-acting, you know, your stereotypical drunk. He's going through the routine of several commercials and everything like that. He's really up and he's all over the place, and next thing you know, he's asleep. <clears throat> now, you don't get the impression that he's found the meaning of life here. This is just another random experience in life that he's fascinated by and that he wants to get into. When he wakes up, he'll have a headache, and he'll say, Wow, this is a really weird, nasty experience, this headache thing. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, this uh, this nausea in the stomach and slightly bad nerves or whatever. Yeah, that's a... Uh, you know, he'll act as though that's the only person who's ever had a hangover in their life. Um and that hangovers are a completely new phenomenon to him. Everything that he ever sees, does, encounters, or experiences is a source of wonderment to him, which is the same kind of um, view of life that all the other characters in there have, that Jerry has, that George has, but it's a positive thing, because he sees the world in a childish kind of way. He sees the world as, wow, <laughs> you know, whereas, you know, George and, and uh, Jerry and everybody are sort of behind the, 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 the cart. They're sort of always playing catch-up to the world, whereas, you know, Kramer simply doesn't have any desire to catch up to anything. He just wants to just sit there and be a spectator of it all and get an, cram as much experience into his life as he can. Endless amazement. 
Um, this video doesn't even scratch the surface of the issues that have been sort of raised by your videos in terms of life and uh, a life half lived and everything, but it's it kind of touches on them. Um, and uh, uh, this kind of thing is uh, is mother's milk to me too. This is you know I, I can't remember a time in my life when I wasn't somewhat amazed by everything. It that, again that mutates into bewilderment a lot, uh, but the the amazement is there as well. Um, and that to me is uh, is you know that to me is a life worth living is when you actually are able to experience things that way. <laughs>